Hello, and welcome to Energy Rhythms. This is your friend and host, Arti Gupta. Thank you for joining me uh, on my show. Uh, this is a live broadcast, and you can tune in on my show or any of the other shows at uh, rvntv.tv. Our special guest today, uh, she is, I should say, a Jill of all trades. Um, she is a singer, a songwriter, and an author as well. She just got her book released, uh, Healthy Things You Could Do in Front of the TV, uh, on May 2nd. That was released in Amazon. So uh, welcome, Kama. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Sorry I mispronounced your name. It's Kama Linden. She's from New York City. Uh, so thank you for joining us today on my show. Thanks, Sarathi. I appreciate it. I wanted, like I said, everybody's got their own talents and gifts. And I'm actually curious to know, and I'm sure our viewers also would like to know, as to how did you get inspired into songwriting and becoming a singer? It, it, it evolved. Um, it's funny, when I was a child, I used to have piano lessons, which were not my favorite thing to do. I think most, many children don't like their piano lessons. But uh, I wrote my first song when I was about 10 years old. And then it seemed like when I, when I was, uh, I took a break from doing musical theater, I used to get songs that would wake me up in the middle of the night. When I wrote Waiting, when I wrote Another Me, when I wrote uh, Don't Shut Me Out, all of these songs just sort of came to me, and it's like I would be laying down in my bed and they would just, you know, come. So I would have to get up and write the song. I also find that exercise helps me write, because sometimes, at the time when I wrote Uninhibited, most of the songs that I wrote, I would be on a run to various people's music, and I would just get inspired to write. And my song would be nothing like theirs, but it would just be kind of like inspired by. So say I was listening to, at the time I used to love to listen to Alanis Morissette, her second album, and it kind of had a very weird, uh, talky feel with like an Indian music background. And I think Waiting kind of was inspired by that. And it was sort of a, a long, I won't even say spoken word, but it was meant to be just like a little bit weird, a little bit off center. And then um, another me, I can't even tell you what inspired me to write the musical quality to that. But the actual words, I've had people in my life who've always said, you know, you're going to be nothing, you, you think you're so great, you're not going to be anything, and the whole song Another Me is basically an in-your-face, yes, I am. And people telling you no just makes you stronger. People telling you you can't just makes you want to do it more. So that's the whole idea behind Another Me. And the song Another Me has actually been used, both the song itself as well as the background music has been used for various commercial uses, so I had somebody in publishing who, you know, would use the background music to it and put it in all kinds of spots. Mm -hmm. Now, like, I know you were very young when you started, you said 10 years old. So, like, specifically, what type of, I should say, meaning or genre did you, like, what did you write about in your songs? Well, I think my 10-year-old self, I don't think any of the, the songs I wrote back then would have been worth you know, putting out there, so. Um, but each year and each album, I think I've begun to, whether I, I know it or not, I've begun to have some kind of underlying theme, or under, uh, Uninhibited was kind of my first work, so the songs may or may not have that much to do with each other, whereas um, Better Late Than Never is actually a story. It is a 15 song, album that is basically a single woman's journey through life, love, loss, finding God, finding herself. And it starts off with Better Late Than Never, which, believe it or not, one of my favorite movies was Singles. And at the end of the movie, Campbell Scott says to Kira Sedgwick, what took you so long? And that is actually the first line of the song, where it's like, you're looking for love, you're looking for whatever it is you're looking for, and then it's kind of like, wow, I could have had a VA. It's been here. It's right there. And now i got to tell this person before it's too late. So if you imagine, you know, the tearing through the traffic, in the rain, ripped pantyhose, running in heels, breathless, ending up at this person's door, and the first thing they say to you is, well, what took you so long? So it's an urgent song, 
And then as the album evolves and goes through, it starts with other things like the problems of having a relationship or um, even death. Here she lies and uh, you've forgotten me, you know, meeting the love of your life and then he just burns you, like walks by you like you're nothing. Um, and then it ends with Happy, the acapella version, which is basically my version of a gospel. Um, Southern Comfort, I started going to Nashville again in 2008. I went to the songwriter conferences. I met a lot of great people, learned. I went to school when I was down there. It was just like, you learn from the best in Nashville. These people can write a hook. These people can pick. These people can play. And I recorded that third album down there, and it cost me a quarter of what it cost to make Better Late Than Never. The quality was amazing. I had seven of the best musicians in the world. The people producing my albums all had their own albums, so uh, gosh, it was amazing and the best way to do things. And plus, I came down there ready, the lyrics were ready, the chord progressions were ready, and then they just put their own flavor to it, and I let them run with it. I, ga I gave them some structure, but I didn't tell them, it must be like this. I'm just like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds great. And you give those musicians the run and the creativity, and it's just like, adding a special spice to your sauce you didn't even know you had in the house and it comes out amazing so the songs in southern comfort a lot of them are owed to nashville but it's about my life on the road as well as various places i've been where they were written in places like eastside heights eastside park jersey girls about point pleasant not thinking about you i wrote when i was down at seaside um the uh, song go i wrote about someone who's driving me crazy when i was down in australia um, each as a Southern Comforts, obviously Nashville, and Make Room for Mama. I wrote when I was driving from one gig to another, and I'm stuck behind the slowpoke. And one of the lyrics in the song is, "If you can't keep up, then to the right." So each of those songs had some inspiration about being wrote or written while on the way. Mm -hmm. We're going to be actually taking a quick break, so sure. we're going to stay tuned, and uh, we'll be back. Hi, I'm Christine Patton, the Juice Girl. The Champion Juicer has been my juicer of choice for years. Whether I'm making a glass of juice or a large batch of juice for my juice bar, these juicers are simple to use and so easy to clean. Champion Juicers are masticating, cold-pressed juicers. Two models are available, the Classic 2000 and the new Elite 4000. Besides juicing, both models can make frozen fruit, smoothies, nut butters, sauces, and even baby food. The Elite 4000 Champion Juicer also excels at juicing greens and wheatgrass. These juicers deserve to be called the world's finest. For more information, please visit my website at juicegirlpharmacy.com or championjuicer.com. Is your business growing and now you need a new and bigger building? Has your organization outgrown their facility and now it's time to expand? Do your hobbies require the need for more space? If you're paying rent, but now you want the advantages of owning, the prospect of financing, construction, and on-time completion may seem out of your reach. General Steel Corporation has the answer. A pre-engineered steel building from the General will not only look great and satisfy almost any need, but you'll save time and money. Our team will help you create your building and deliver it to your location. We offer design services to help you present your concept to board members, bankers, or for fundraising. And the General can even help with financing. General Steel is a name you know, with quality backed by a 50-year structural warranty. Call today and find out how easy it is to have the building you want. You may even save up to $20,000 with rebates. If you need space, you need the General. Welcome back to Energy Rhythms. Uh, our special guest today is uh, Kema Linden from New York City. She is an author, a, sing a songwriter, as well as a singer. Uh, Kema, I wanted to ask you, we're going to actually be shifting gears. 
Uh, since you are a certified fitness enthusiastic, I want to know, could you tell us more about your body-friendly yoga DVD that you had made? Sure. Um, I've been teaching yoga since the year 2000, and I was a dancer before that. And one of the things I noticed when I was doing the workshop, as well as when I took classes with other people, is everyone seemed to look broken. And that's the best analysis I can give. Like, their elbows would seem backwards. Their shoulder would pop out of their skin and protrude forward. The, the pelvic bone, like you could see it popping through the skin and the knees twisting this way, the ankle that way. And I'm looking at the body saying, what is this? What is this they're trying to do? And then I'm listening to what the instructors are saying. And they're like, pretend you're between two panes of glass. Or uh, make your foot 90 degrees. Bring your arm to the ceiling. So what happens is people end up twisting their arms so far out of the joint, the shoulder's going this way, the arm's going that way. But the problem is they didn't align the arm with the body. That doesn't make any sense. Or they didn't check to see that the knee is in line with the pelvis, that's in line with the toe. So if you're giving your cue and you're telling someone to twist their foot to 90 degrees, that's all they're going to do. And they're going to forget about the rest of their body. So I try to make my yoga very simple in the respect is the turnout you have is the turnout you have. I was a dancer. I never had that perfect 180 degree turnout. I was a little more Martha Graham. So most people don't. And even people in Balanchine Valley, there's very few people who have that extreme turnout. So in the process of forcing your students to make their feet backwards or you know be flat, you're going to hurt them. And more often than not, people are getting hip replacements in their 30s, which makes no sense. You shouldn't even have a hip replacement, even in your 80s. People are having rotator cuff tears. People are having all kinds of joint issues. And you see it. You see by this weird esoteric stance that these instructors are asking for. And if you ask them, and I'll just be a devil's advocate, well, why are you telling them to do that? Well, that's the way it's done. Take your foot, and when you do pigeon, make your foot so it matches your knee. Do you know that you can tear your meniscus doing that? So why am I going to tell my students that? Then they get hurt, and worst case, you know, they'll, they'll sue me or the gym. So I sure as heck don't want to do that. So if you make it simple, your pelvis is square. Your front foot, the knee, the toe, and the hip are perfectly aligned. Your back foot, whatever turnout you have, use that turnout. Make sure your foot can stand firmly on the floor. Make sure you're not rolling in on your arch. And your, if your pelvis is square without forcing it, then chances are that's your perfect turnout for your body. And then if you're doing something like an ukitasa, which is a squat, you don't want to bring your knees together because you don't walk that way. You don't want your knees to have internal rotation when you're walking. Over time, you're going to tear your ACL, PCL, your meniscus, and you're going to have knee problems. Watching people walk up the stairs, sometimes people don't use their glutes to walk up the stairs or their quads. They tend to push their knee forward. So people do that in the warrior two when they're trying to make themselves flat. And you see them pushing their knee forward in front of their toe and that's why your knee hurts. But the thing is, if you bend your hip before you bend your knee, then you're gonna stop in that perfect 90 degree angle. There'll be a crease at your hip, your pelvis will protrude forward through the skin, and your hip bone, knee bone, and second toe will align. And it's not that you're trying to look sideways or look flat. You're trying to move your body and keep space in your joints. And then on top of that, if I have more advanced students, we're doing a lot of push-ups, we're doing a lot of chaturanga, I make them do a lot of planks, a lot of kick-up lunges, it's a flow. But the most important thing is if you're pushing your bones into weird shapes, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You want to keep it simple. So that's why I call it body-friendly yoga. It's like an intense workout without the injury. That's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. And I, I do agree with you what you said, that yoga, it's a full-body routine. Yes, um, yes. And like I said, the mind, the body, it's a spirit connection um, when you do the yoga. So, so um, like I said, best, like I said, congratulations to you for the DVD. Um, now, if anybody wants to purchase the DVD, can they go to their website and purchase it? Correct. So, my music website, K A M A L I N D E N dot com, will take you to all the websites. Kamalinding.com has my music, it has the link to the book, and also it will say yoga, which will take you to the second website, which is Body Friendly Yoga with One Y. B O D Y F R I E N D L Y O G A dot com. So don't add a second Y between friendly and yoga. 
Just one. Okay. So, guys, you heard it's body friendly yoga, and you can get it, uh, you can purchase her uh, DVD at her website. It's kamalinden.com. So, we're going to be talking more with Kama, but stay right where you are, and we'll be back after a quick commercial break. When did you see the sign? When I needed to jumpstart sales. Build attendance for an event. Help people find their way. Fast Signs designed new directional signage. And got them back on track. Get started at FastSigns.com. I'm Casey Price, host of a brand new show on RVN TV called Justice For All. Tune in every Tuesday at 1 p.m. as some of South Jersey's amazing attorneys share their stories and important legal information that could affect you and the people you love. Remember, that's Injustice for All, every Tuesday at 1 p.m., only on RVN TV. Is your business growing and now you need a new and bigger building? Has your organization outgrown their facility and now it's time to expand? Do your hobbies require the need for more space? If you're paying rent, but now you want the advantages of owning, the prospect of financing, construction, and on-time completion may seem out of your reach. General Steel Corporation has the answer. A pre-engineered steel building from the General will not only look great and satisfy almost any need, but you'll save time and money. Our team will help you create your building and deliver it to your location. We offer design services to help you present your concept to board members, bankers, or for fundraising. And the General can even help with financing. General Steel is a name you know, with quality backed by a 50-year structural warranty. Call today and find out how easy it is to have the building you want. You may even save up to $20,000 with rebates. If you need space, you need the General. Welcome back to Energy Rhythms. Uh, this is your host, Arti Gupta. And please note this is a live broadcast. And like I said, you can watch my show and the, all the other shows at rvntv.tv network. Before we had gone to the break, Kam, uh, Kema had um, told us as to about her DVD and how you can purchase it. And since this is um, for body-friendly yoga, so you don't have to injure yourself. Um, otherwise, like I said, people, when they do exercise, they don't know what they're doing. Um, I mean, their minds are like somewhere else, but they're not focusing. So um, like I said, you have to put your mind, like I said, it's a mind, body, spirit connection when you're doing especially the yoga. Uh, Kim, I wanted to ask you, what is your motto in life? Um, like. What did you, what do you, what, what would you say is the essence that you find in your life right now? Um, it's funny, I'll, I'll say that with my exercise folks, I'll say this with my music, and I'll say this with my real estate clients. I also am a realtor here in New York. I will say, you know, keep throwing spaghetti at the wall until it sticks. You know, you have to keep trying, you have to. If something doesn't work the first time, you know, figure out what's going on and then try it again and hopefully it works out. I love the, um, the analogy and the symbolism you said that just throw it until it sticks <laughs> onto the wall. Um, exactly. that's, that's pretty um, very rhetorical and uh, very different type of meaning and a different type of perspective as well. Um, now, you teach seniors also one day a week. Can you tell us more about that? It's funny. Um, they use the word uh, silver sneakers, or um, but and technically anyone who has a, uh, a Medicare account usually will have silver sneakers as one of their perks and benefits, so they can usually go to various gyms that have the silver sneakers program and use the membership. And part of the membership is they could use the gym at certain hours for free or very low cost, or they could take the classes. Now, the classes, the beauty of it is perhaps you have very beginner exercisers, but at the same time, most of my seniors, they are very fit, they are very energetic, they are fine to do anything and everything that you throw at them. So most of my group will stand the whole time unless they're having some kind of issue or injury. Once in a while, I do get someone in the class 
which is part of what inspired my book, Healthy Things You Can Do in Front of the TV, who has a knee replacement or had a shoulder thing or um, perhaps they came back from a very serious illness. Um, the thing is, whatever's going on with your body, there's a way to still take care of yourself, get stronger, rehab your body, and make yourself better, be able to move better, take care of yourself better. So sometimes, and in, in most exercises and workouts that come out these days are geared toward people like me who already work out. I don't really need that many new ideas. I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm going to swim an hour 40 and do my 100 laps in a 25 yard pool three times a week. I'm going to run five plus miles three times a week. I'm going to lift my weight. I'm going to do my yoga. You don't have to tell me. The thing is, there's a very large population, and you can get on the train, you can go to the Bronx, you can think, ooh, they don't know how to eat right. They're scared. They're scared of the gym. You're, you know, let's just say you're out of shape, you're overweight, you have this injury, that injury, you look around you, and you see what you think are these perfect bodies, and you're like, oh my gosh, I am not doing that. I feel very intimidated. So the point is, there's reasons why people don't go to the gym, and it doesn't mean that they shouldn't exercise and that they shouldn't do something that's good for their body. So just like the yoga, sometimes people are told weird things, like when they're doing squats. I have no idea where this came from, but people will like spread their legs out wider than their hips, and they're like, that's hip width. I'm like, no, your hips are actually this big. Your hip bone, your knee bone, and your second toe should always align with you doing a squat, a lunge, you're walking down the street. You don't walk with your feet outside your hip bone. That's mm -hmm. bizarre, right? So why are you telling people to do squats with their feet outside their hip line turned out in different directions because you don't sit that way, right? Or you don't want to sit that way. And then they'll tell them to come up and they like thrust their entire pelvis and back in front of their hip line. So again, hip replacement, knee replacement. For what? What are you teaching people? It's a very bizarre thing. Or like when they're doing a row, you want to keep your shoulder down and bring your elbow, give or take, to the line of your rib cage. If you're bringing it forward, then what happens? Your shoulder's protruding forward. Now, I like to row for 20 pounds. I lift suitcases all day. I lift amps. I lift guitars. The last thing I'll do is pop my shoulder forward when I'm lifting luggage, right? So you want to find a way to teach people neutral spine, three curves of the body, and that's one of the articles I sent you as well. And then you move the weight to the point where you feel the resistance, where you feel the weight resistance, and you don't go beyond the range of motion for the joint that gives you strength. So that's how you're going to build and develop the strength. And as I was saying earlier, there are people who don't go to the gym for various reasons. Is there any reason that while you're watching a TV show, you can't do some leg lifts, do some squats in front of your chair, march in place, do some of the punches? I sit at my bench in the morning, I'm typing, I'm answering emails, and then I'll go lie down and do a set. And I come back and answer some more emails, and I lie down and do a set, and I answer some more emails, and so on and so forth. And then I take a really good break and I'll do my run or I'll do my swim and I just get away from my computer entirely. So there's always a way. And part of it's just giving people the aha moment like, oh yeah, I guess while I'm sitting here and holding this awesome factor or while I'm sitting here watching my TV show, I should be doing two sets of ten with my leg lifts. Yes, you can. Exactly. Yeah, like um, you do have to keep the body actually is made for movement. Um, like you had just mentioned. So like I said, the more you move your body, the more I should say that less, I should say illnesses are gonna come to you. You're gonna get less colds and cough and respiratory uh, problems as well. So like I said, you gotta keep the body moving and like I said, have the right foods, exercise. And like I said, now that there's so many baby boomers are living longer uh, into their 80s and 90s even, so, and I think that's, that's phenomenal that you teach the seniors um, uh, the yoga and the fitness. That's, uh, that's wonderful. So, guys, if you want to book uh, Kema Linden uh, for your event, uh, you need to go to her website. It's uh, Kema, K-A-M-A Linden, with no spaces, dot com. And you can um, check her bio, her, her links. Um, like I said, you could even purchase her book, which is the healthy things you could do in front of the TV, uh, which was released by Amazon uh, on May 2nd, as well as you can purchase her three CDs, The Unhibited, Southern Comfort, and Better Late Than Never. 
uh, for, uh, for, like for gifts. Um, now that Father's Day is coming up, uh, next Sunday, June the 17th, these will make perfect uh, Father's Day gifts. Um, so thank you so much, Kama, for joining us. I really enjoyed um, learning about you. And uh, I'm sure the viewers also um, got also a glimpse of what you are and uh, who you are in your life as well. So thank you so much for that. It is my pleasure. Thank you so very much. And shout out to University of the Arts, because I know you're in Cherry Hill and many of us went to, you know, came from Cherry Hill to go to the, my school. Yeah, thank you so much for that. So guys, have a great Tuesday. And I will see you at the same time, same place next week. Take care. God bless.